Hi everybody, this is Morten from Evil Hippie here with a small fast tip on how to make uh, muscles on your character animations. So I'm gonna start off by showing you how I usually did this uh, before I found out how to do real muscle animations. I just did usual skeletal animations. Um, so this is a normal setup. This is an arm. I usually use a reference if I can get away with it, if I can find one or as in this case, if I can record one uh, without it being too embarrassing. So arms are okay, I guess. Um, here I have just a normal skeletal setup with a upper arm, a lower arm, and a hand. And if we just go into weight paint mode, we can see the influence of the hand goes a little bit down here. The influence of the forearm basically just the entire area and a little bit down the elbow here and also something here to try to prevent too much creasing and the upper arm or the base bone as I called it here it's basically just the same thing as the forearm reversed but as you can also see especially if we go back to object mode um, we do have a bit of problems around the bending here we have the the usual known issue where we have sort of like a nasty crease and the arm gets a lot thinner where a normal arm as you can see from the from the reference uh, actually gets a bit thicker at this point and it gets a nice sharp elbow so what I'm going to show you now is just how to um, set up a simple muscle um, to try and and get this animation to be better and I already done that so I'm just gonna find the file um, and then I'm going to show you how that one's set up. I'm not going to make it from scratch. Uh, I know some people do this, but I'm not because I'm just going to fuck it up anyway. Um, so here I can show you how the muscle works. I have added some new muscles, uh, sorry, some new bones. In this case, I've added some uh, attachments for the muscle. Um, I've added more down here. Uh, I'll show you later why I have these. These are for other muscles that are hidden at the moment. <clears throat> just for clarity, I'm just going to show you this one muscle uh, to start with. Um, this one should try to simulate the um, the agitation of the biceps muscle, which is the one up here, the one that bends the arm. Uh, and as you can see, if I just try to slide along the animation we get both a better uh, deformation around the crease here, we get a thick arm, and we get a nice elbow, sharp elbow, and we get a muscle bulge. The muscle bulge is actually a very nice feature, and I'm going to talk a bit about that in a moment. First I'm going to show you the other muscles. Uh, hit Alt-H, oops, Alt-H, and then we get all the other muscles. Um, so these two muscles on the inside of the bend um, takes care of giving us the nice deformation on the inside and these two takes care of giving us the nice sharp elbow joint down here even though the the joint is actually not quite at the tip of the of the mesh and even less so when it's straight so how did I go about doing this? Well, it's actually quite simple. I add the bones. We just go to edit mode. And I think we go out of edit mode again. And we just remove this layer. So back to edit mode. I simply just added a lot more bones and some of them I just use as muscles. I added attachments that follow the large bones, in this case the forearm. This little at attachment follows the forearm. Um, and the reason for the attachment is merely so that I can stretch this one to a point that's not on the large bone. Same thing here. Muscle and a small attachment. Muscle oops, and a small attachment and so forth. Now, going back into pose mode, I'm going to show you how I set this up. This one is the child 
of the base bone, so it lives in the um, in the coordinate system of the of the base bone, um, and then I've added a bone constraint to it. So what you do is you go over here in the bone constraint, uh, and then you add a bone constraint. And the one I use for muscles is the stretch two modifier. Um, I actually got the original idea from this by using Make Human, which is a very nice program. If you're not into doing your character modeling yourself, you can actually get some pretty nice starting um, meshes for humans uh, in, in Make Human. And I saw that they actually use something similar to this uh, in the shoulder region to get realistic deformation in the shoulder region. So. You take your muscle and you stretch it to the target should be the armature, which is what they are all part of. And then you should, should choose the bone, in this case the forearm attachment that you want it to stretch to. Um, then you basically you, you're good to go from here. Uh, if you do that, when you do the, the deformation, then the muscle is going to stretch according to the position and rotation of the attachment. Now what you can see is that you also actually as a bonus you also get a bulging here and that's because the stretch to modifier has a volume preservation feature in it and you can actually tweak this one so you can set the volume um, to be exaggerated like say times five and then you get a larger muscle bulge. For realistic deformations it should be one or below one, in my personal uh, experience. Right, so what you do is you set up all these muscles with a stretch to modifier, um, and then you need probably to tweak the rest length a bit. I haven't had a lot of luck with just using the reset, um, but you can tweak it a lot and you're gonna get some nice results from that. Um, and then, when you get the muscles ready, you can actually take your mesh and then you just bind the mesh not to the skeletal bones but to the muscle bones. So let's just have a look at this one and see how the weights look. This has, for example, the, um, the biceps um, where I just painted it on loosely. This is not by any means a, a, a finished deformation, this is just to show you how it works. Um, and the hand up here, the muscle on the outside, the muscle on the underside of the arm here. Um, so basically I just painted them on and I actually also have a little influence from the skeletal, mu skeletal uh, muscles, uh, or sorry, bones underneath here because if you want this to look realistic, you need to take into account the fact that some of your skin um, actually has attachments to the bone. So the base bone has up here, it has a little effect and it has some effect down here also. This is something that you should tweak and you can tweak it endlessly and you can spend a lot of time tweaking it. Um, but as you get better and as you get some experience in doing it, you're actually going to be able to do it quite fast. So I'm just going to show you a small running um, simulation, or sorry, animation that I'd made. I'm just going to get rid of all these layers so it won't be too slow. Deselect, sorry, deselect so that we can better see what's happening. So this is a female mesh. Uh, that I modeled some time ago uh, and I rigged it using the um, the meta rig in Blender just go up here I think it's yeah the human meta rig uh, armature I used that one uh, which is basically just the rigify uh, I think you need to actually go I s still think you need to go into your preferences and and actually activate the um, the rigify uh, to get it work to work properly, um, but if you've got that one done, then you uh, just add muscles to your rigify rig, uh, and then you can actually get a quite a nice result. So I'm just going to find my rig again, um, and then I'm going to choose the right layer, 
So I can show you just the layer with the with the muscles in it. Here you go. So for this animation, I actually added quite a lot of muscles. I added muscles here in the knee region. I added muscles for the Achilles uh, tendon. I added some a lot of muscles actually in the hip region because that's usually a problem region because of the the three degree of freedom joint that you have in the in the hip. Uh, same thing goes for the shoulder. A lot of problems in the shoulders usually. So a lot of muscles there to compensate, and also here in the neck to compensate for the fact that you get a really weird twisty motion when when you turn the head um, if you if you don't have something to simulate the tendons in the neck, the two large tendons uh, in the neck. <clears throat> so, if we just run this animation, you can see how the muscles deform. Um, I've added a custom shape to my muscles to tell them apart from the bones, and I also put them in a layer by themselves so that I can see how they work without having all the rest of the bones visible. Um, and this is quite easily done in uh, in the Rigify rig because there's lots of empty layers that you can use for your muscles. So basically what I did was bind, instead of binding my mesh to the uh, to the bones that you would usually use in the, uh, the Rigify rig, which is these bones, um, I just chose this layer instead and then some of the mesh is bound to the muscles. Some of the bones, uh, so, sorry, some of the mesh is bound to the uh, to the bones, and that it does take quite some time if you want to paint this by hand. Um, I haven't tried myself, but I would imagine that you could add the muscles to the skeleton before you actually bound the mesh to it, and then you could just use automatic weights, and you can get quite quite some way by doing that, and then you just need to tweak it a bit in the end. So if I just remove the skeleton again, we can look a bit about what we get from this animation. So if we look at the, the gluteus muscle here, where I added a muscle, we can see that we now get both the contraction of the muscle, um, so that we don't just get a crease, but we actually get something where the muscle bulges as she steps backwards with her legs. Um, we can see that in the region of the knees, just want to run it a little bit slower. In the region of the knees we get a nice deformation even when the leg is very bent. And if we look at the shoulder region you can see that we have also nice deformation where we have almost no self intersection and a nice smooth bending. So the last thing I'm gonna show you is up here where we have some tendons. So I have placed a tendon here and a tendon here. And if we just go into the rig and turn on the, let's just see if I can find it. Turn on the right layer. Just gonna pause the video. So now we have the uh, the controller for the head motion and if we're just gonna twist that one a bit then we can actually see that instead of this annoying rotating where we, we get sort of like an S shape here we actually get something that looks almost real uh, because the tendons up here they deform in a stretchy way instead of deforming in in a rotating way. We can also go to the side, see what happens if we lift the head up a bit. So we get a stretching here instead of a rotation. Um, so this is a blend between actually my tendon and the original um, rotational deformation and therefore we get a little bit of rotation here but that could be tweaked further and you could get a pure tenderness stretchy deformation here. So that's basically it. I hope you can use this to set up some more realistic deformations especially where you have like large deformations even though I get a little bit of 
self intersection here I just switch to wireframe and I'm gonna show you that in here we actually have something that looks quite similar to what happens in real life that's all for this time thank you for watching